Um, well, uh, you know, obviously, and we already know that we're an animal movie, so this is our thing. Um, yeah, we get the great pilot up over there now, and this is, I love pointing it out, it's our movie. Uh, it's this incredibly overall <laughs> structure within the structure. Uh, Buffalo has a long history with rain and morning and rain building dust explosions. Uh, we have all kinds of, you may have seen the rain elevators down town. This was a huge, huge building and ball tank center at one time. All of which is to say, when you say to the city, yeah, uh, we want to start a brewery, great, what are you doing in there, blah, 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 we'll be milling some grains. Oh, will you now? <laughs> well, let me tell you. The city loves that. Huh? Yeah. They, um, and it's, it's generally not a bad idea to have your mill kind of in a room anyway, because there's all kinds of stuff on the dust you don't want. But uh, this thing is insanely overbuilt. It's three hours fire rated. It's like three sheets of, of sheet rock uh, with aluminum struts that are like every six inches instead of 18 or whatever. I mean, this building could fall down around us. If we go into here, we could probably survive for days and blow it up. And no one would find us or anything. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Especially when you recognize that what's in there, as far as the mill goes, is a homebrew mill on a cliff. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Can you see that? Yeah. That's uh, sweet. Uh, this is Rudy's uh, uh, Harley Crusher. Rudy's <laughs> old homebrew mill. Yeah, yeah the Harley Crusher. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it gets the job done for us for now. You right. know, at the volume that we're making beer, it's right. it's not, in fact, even really tedious because there's plenty of time for the water to heat up. So we that can maybe the best thing I've ever seen in a brewery. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be nice to have more than a seven-pound hopper because right. most batches are coming in seventy-five hundred pounds. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of pouring, and walking away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll get that. But you know, it affords us an opportunity to make and drink our coffee and uh, watch the ice get hot. So, you know. Um, but yeah, so there's our. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and then everything over here. goes over here. So, from left to right, we have the boil kettle, the mash tun, and the hot liquor tank with a recirculation coil in it. Um, so, we pour the grains into the mash tun, add the mash water, the stripe water. Um, and then, to hold the mash to temperature, we're pumping it out of there through the recirculation coil in the hot liquor tank and then back into the mash tank. So okay. it's a rinse. Um, and that is, it is kind of nice because it means we don't have to put flame on the mash tun and we do the beer and hold the temperature and it also doesn't have to be like severe release. It's basically just work with the temperature in the hot liquor tank. Um, then it's time to raise it up to mash out and we kind of feel the flame there. So far, so good. Okay. You know, quality, uh, well, well, quality. Work well, it seems to not be a problem at all. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, um, and uh, so maybe give us like a tour of the a little close-up of the systems. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
The, uh, the brew station itself is designed by these guys in Michigan. They're called cool Psycho Brew. Psycho Brew? Okay. They're cool, they're cool guys, actually. They're, they're really great to work with. Um, but, you know, they, they know the whole thing with the controllers as well as the pumps. Basically, the stand and the burners. Okay. Uh, each of those burners is uh, 200,000 BTU. So the whole thing can you know, generate 600,000 BTU if they're all on the full. Um, not exactly sure it's what, a lot of heat, it's not that much fun when you're standing above it. Yeah, right. and they're all cranking. Okay. We'll be better in the end. We're actually going to come around the back here. That's yeah. it, right? Yeah. I'm sure so if we are missed. Yeah. Alright, that's not the thing. Nah, but this is the part all of us homebrewers love. Well, right. The gigantic burgers. Yes. Mm, those are some they really are a uh, one that should be holding quite loud. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh man, the bevy of homebrew buckets. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, there's never enough buckets. But it's a really great use for buckets that are you know scratched up or whatever. Just kind of use them. You can lump water somewhere or whatever. Cool. Yeah. All that fun stuff. He's got you know on and off with two pumps. Um, what these little love controllers do is they let us dial in the temperature so these temperature probes go into the hot liquor tank into the mash tun. And you can basically set them and you, they have a learning mode so that they basically learn how to bring the water up to that temperature without overshooting it um, over time. Nice. Uh, and they'll actually drive the, uh, the gas burners? Yeah, they yeah. turn off and on the, the heat. And you know, once it's really pretty much where it's supposed to be, it's, it's almost comical because the heat will turn on for like five seconds and turn off. Right. You see this giant flame leap up for like five seconds and then turn off and you're like, really? That did anything? <laughs> All right. And you just roll them with March 809s? Yep. Yeah, those are working wonderful. And we've got a larger March pump over there that we're using when we need to push stuff a little bit further. Um, but I think, is that their nano pump? It's still um, not like a it's professional big, level. Yeah, it's, it's the it's biggest pump March makes. Okay. And it was great to find because it was like, we're going to spend 2500 bucks on a pump. Oh wait, we're going to spend significantly less on a pump. <laughs> significantly less. Very, very happy. It to doesn't that. generate enough PSI to run the CIP bulbs in our, in our uh, okay. fermenters, unfortunately. So we're cleaning them by hand. Ah. But, uh, I can think of worse things. It's true. You shouldn't have to crawl around in there with a bunny suit. You want to break. That's right. No, we just uh, you know reach in or fill all the line. That's okay. We just started chilling this one. Nice and cool. Nice and cool. Seems to be working. Yeah. It does. I mean, there's a really clever thing that we we uh, were we learned of somewhere along the line called Coolbot, which is basically a, a temperature override for the AC units. You know, so I was looking AC at that silly thing. Cool. What you do is you fish out the film stand and attach it to this cool box so you get the heater. And then the cool box is the, is the temperature controller and it will apply heat to the AC's temperature sensor, basically cooling the thing and thinking it's still 70 degrees in the room um, until it falls out of the temperature and you've totally attached to it. Huh, that thing actually works, huh? Yeah, it, it actually works yeah. really well. It's quite clever. I mean, we're really impressed with them. They, they did take a little bit of time to learn how to use because one of the things that will happen is that the fins on the inside will freeze up and the cool bot also has a sensor for that and it basically says, oh, your fins are 32 degrees, I'm going to shut this thing off until they warm up again. Sometimes that works, sometimes they actually just freeze up. So you have to play with the fin setting. And I think that's more our, we didn't put enough BTUs in any of the rooms. And it would be better if there were floors in here because right now the concrete just kind of sucks the cold mm. and it pushes in hot. Right. So, but yeah, we, we put in a, a bigger unit in this room over here, and the icing was significantly reduced. Oh, okay. So this one obviously isn't modded quite as nicely as the others because we just threw it in there. Uh, oh, okay, so you have three separate so fermentation we have three separate rooms. Pillars, right. So I this gotcha. one, we just those fermenters that were out there were in here this morning. Uh, so we just we just cleaned it out, drying off the floor. Um, Very nice. Yeah. And then for right now, over here. Our third room is acting as our cold room. Eventually we'll be fermenting in here too, and that over there will be our cold room. But right now, this ah. is our cold room. So this is keeping it at 38, 39, 40. 
Okay. Pretty consistent. I like how he's really impressed by this. Now he's like, this black keg is really nice. <laughs> they do. They attract dust, though. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the black kegs are sexy. Yeah. <laughs> and those are the finale <laughs> kegs? They're the plastic ones. Yeah. yeah. They're super light. Um, so empty, they're eight pounds. Nice. Great. Plus, they have no strength value, so they're far less likely to disappear. Yep. Yep. And, uh, I'm going to take a bunch of time. Our partner game does it best. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Play Donkey, Donkey Kong? Nice. Um, that will be, like we were saying, our whole thing when we're done. We're, you know, we got started as soon as we could like, plausibly get started, but there are things that are still coming that will kind of continue to set up. This is the big one because obviously that thing is just sort of adequate in terms of size and moving around and there is well at the moment, nearly possible. Nice. So this will be and uh, yes. there's a giant heat exchanger we have yet to mount up there. That will be glycol powered. Oh, and awesome. this room will be super cold. Now, mm -hmm. as far as this room is concerned, it's much taller than the other ones. Is there any reason for that? Do yeah, you we thought... Taller things Well, we taller. knew that we had to keep the, the beer cold, obviously, but we also want to keep our house cold. So we just thought, well, it's a little taller. We've got ceilings and we can put some shelves up along the top and through the hops up there, much higher than the rubber stack case. Um, should work with any amount of <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that will be the cold room, and then when the glycol comes and powers this thing, it will also power two light tanks, I'll talk about that in a second, and then this cooler, which is also one of the craft. Actually, this is largely built uh, for us by, we did all of this stuff ourselves, and then we found a friend who happens to be a master carpenter, and is also ironically named Timothy Leary. It's great. Um, I love the guy. So, uh, he built this, and I mean, this is far squarer than anything. <laughs> no, all the right angles are truly right. Like, Tim, it's perfect. He's like, no, I need to. It's, it's like a quarter of a degree off. Yeah. Uh, but the door closes. <laughs> Not no. good enough for Tim. Yeah. Nice. All of these are like 15 degree angle. And he's good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wish we'd had him around. Nice. Things, although they're, they're fine. So, what's the point of this guy here? So, what this is, is where, when we, are, when we have our retail side open, this is where the kegs will be for retail. So, these oh. will be basically tax determined at this point and we'll be pouring the growler fills out of here. Awesome. And this is built to hold 10 or so kegs, maybe even a little bit more, depending on whether we're talking six barrels or halves. Um, but it should hold plenty of beer for us to fill the growlers. Sweet. Um, from the other side. Nice. For now, however, that's our Yeah, I was, just, I was just admiring your uh, your keg fridge here. Hold on. Yeah. This is... This is going to be very familiar to the kids at home. No doubt. No doubt. Nice. Um, yeah, when that's all working, we'll have that tap box actually mounted rather than standing on it. Oh, that's, that's a tap sexy box. tap box. Yeah. Tap, I, I, my words fail me. No, thanks. <laughs> that was another thing. We're, uh, we're, you know, we're big on the, the community thing, obviously. It's part of our name. But uh, that was built uh, for us by this... Uh, outfit called Rusted Grain. It's these two ladies over on the east side of Buffalo who are taking wood from deconstructed houses. Rather than just knocking them down, there's a couple of outfits in town that literally sort of deconstruct them and save what's salvageable, which is just about everything in the house, really. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and so she buys that wood off them, and she makes beautiful furniture. It's all sort of like Amish style, no joints or no physical joints, mm -hmm. no visible nails and stuff like that. Nice. She's really crafty. And, uh, and she built that. Um, tell us about this bar here too. Wow. Yeah. Another just you know, uh, we're awesome at scrounging. It's because we're really good at garbage picking. Yeah, we are very good at garbage picking. These came with the place that are in the backyard. Those so slabs? Yeah. Uh, uh, can we get those in the car? Mm -hmm. It takes about six people. Yeah. <laughs> we thought they were in the backyard. We had to walk them around. We thought we would walk them around, and we got. About halfway through the backyard, like, bring, bring your Subaru around, and we're gonna jam it in the back of the Subaru and then drive it. So these used to be sidewalk slabs in the city. That's what we're. And initially, my understanding is that they were repurposed into sidewalk slabs by the city. Initially, they were the roads. At least I know like the the slabs on Delaware Road. Oh, really? So I don't know if these have that history, but I'm assuming these were the sidewalk slabs. 
Yeah, the picture looked like a normal paper. Yeah, they're cool. So we just built the black iron pipe stand to put it on there. It yes. sure is. It's not super cheap. But when you're on the way to fix them, it kind of sad. It's the right way to go. Yeah, it was like a badass steampunk pot rack. It was cool. Yes, cool. Like, it was such overkill with pasta. Right. Like, yeah. 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 So you're doing chin-ups on it. It's cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and that is basically it. We have an office, too. It's not that exciting. You want to see it. Before. When do you guys go live with the the beer to the public part? Uh, well, we are selling the beer to the bars already. Right. Um, as far as our retail space goes, uh, very eminently, we were waiting and waiting and waiting for the retail permit, which they wouldn't process until, which is serial in the state. They're like, we won't process this application until this is done, and then we won't process this application until that's done. So the retail permit came after we got our brewing permit, and it was one of those things where you're like, I don't know how long this is going to take. So we didn't feel like spending money to get this all finished when we were right. like, who knows? Their retail permit finally came like last Saturday. Oh, awesome. Two Saturdays. So now we're kind of gearing up and getting ready and putting product aside for us to be selling. Okay. So technically, you're legal to sell now and it's yeah. just a matter of getting everything together to go? Yep. yep. So some oh, that's hot, man. That we haven't really publicly announced it. So oh, I'm excited for you guys. That's great. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, this, uh, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, we will be also selling the and routers at a farmer's market that's just up the street from here. Um, which I think is again sort of a perfect fit for, for us. And it's kind of the farm where we actually shop at ourselves, a lot of us. So Sweet. It's kind of cool for us to be there on the other side of the table. So, All right. Um, yeah. Awesome. That's basically the story here. Um, but yeah, let's show you back to the very exciting office. Yes! Last you know, it's that's actually not relevant anymore, but it's still funny. <laughs> so we left it. Is, uh, it was never relevant. Thank you. Oh, look at this! All serious in here. Desks came with the building. Very nice. Very serious. Yeah. Always very serious. They, they make us look like we know what we're doing. And then the futon makes it look like you know. <laughs> the futon <laughs> makes it look like some of us have to sleep here sometimes. <laughs> Yep. Seems like a good idea to ride my bike here, and then you work, you brew for 12 hours, and it's like, I don't want to ride home. I'm going to lay down for a few minutes. <laughs> Pretty cool. So what do we got on the board? Doing anything good over here? Uh, again, stuff that's not entirely relevant or current, but we were brainstorming a lot about Frank, which is the name of uh, the pale ale that we're making. Mm. So doing a little brainstorming about, you know, the character behind the beer, kind of. Very nice. Sort of see Frank as the uh, stereotypical, or maybe better, quintessential Buffalo man. Um, he's the kind of guy that, you know, everybody has got a guy or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, I, I need some electrical work in my house. To, oh, I got a guy. <laughs> the guy is always Frank, or Stan or Joe, but we decided Frank. Frank. He's our guy. So, uh, yeah, 